Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco Ho! and welcome to my channel. As for this video we have the review of the usual adrenaline drivers, in this case the 24.8.1 and as I say in all oh my, my videos, video. 24 is the year 2024, 8 is the month August and 1 is the revision in that same month, so the first revision of August. And this is actually the first drivers that we get in August, even though, of course, uh, it's almost the end of the month and even then we have just one driver revision we had the same for this for September and I believe that we also had the same for July so MD has been releasing drivers each month if we consider the last 10 releases they have been quite stable so I believe that's a good thing like our sponsor this is the Flexispot C7 ergonomic chair with an adjustable seat lumbar support armrests and headrest it basically gives you all the bells and whistles the other chairs do, but with some extras. Like the self-adaptive lumbar support that will adjust itself depending on your position. Something that's quite comfortable when I go from a more relaxed to a more focused one. And my favorite, the forward sit tilt. That comes very handy when you're feeling tired of being in that same position, as it allows for a better blood flow. And the seat depth is also adjustable and the cushions are quite comfortable enough for several hours straight for when I'm editing these videos, for example. Check out Flexis Potsy 7 with the link below and treat your back the right way. Now, as for the release notes, take in consideration that I'm recording this video before the, the, um, before the, the official release notes get released. <laughs> then they actually sent me the early version of the drivers, or at least the final version, or usually close to the final version. But in terms of release notes, some things might change in between this version that I have and uh, the version that comes out. So take that in consideration. I'm recording this now because tomorrow when the drivers, or tomorrow for you it's today <laughs> when the drivers come out i won't be here i'll be going to germany for gamescom 2024 so in case you're there just well maybe stretch your neck and search for me maybe maybe you can find me and i'm just editing this part because i wanted to tell you that of course gamescom has already passed i had this video recorded for quite some time but the driver wasn't released mostly due to black myth wukong issues uh, but still, the release notes and almost everything applies. It changed like one or two things at most, or maybe they, let's say, they occluded one thing or two, uh, like, for example, the Amuse 2.1 improvements, maybe coming in, a, in the next driver, or still here, I don't know. But anything, fixed issues, uh, everything from that department is basically the same. So I will be keeping the video. And by the way, if you want to watch my Gamescom 2024 video, I mean, Gamescom was a blast and there were some really interesting parts. And you have it here with link in the description as well. It was a very, very fun experience for me and my girlfriend. But well, let's go back to the video. Release notes. Firstly, we start with new game support for Black Myth Wukong that releases today as well. Call of Duty Black Ops Open Beta, Concord, if anybody plays Concord, of course, and Star Wars Outlaws. We also have more Hypertoon support profiles, with Hypertoon support allows HyperRx to enable in-game technologies like AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution, instead of RSR of course, support now added to automatically configure AMD FSR 3 frame generation in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Marvel Spider-Man Remastered and Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. And this is actually an interesting thing because before the HyperRx or the Hypertoon games like AMD calls them, the Hypertoon games um, were different from the other non hypertuned games in one aspect. The hypertuned games were actually enabling automatically or they should enable automatically the FSR inside the game instead of using RSR because when you enable HyperRx it will enable, if I'm not mistaken, AMD Fluid Motion Frames, RSR, Radeon Super Resolution, Radeon Boost and on top of Radeon Boost, Radeon Anti-Lag, exactly, Anti-Lag Boost, A AFMF and RSR. In this case scenario now with um, with the usual Hypertune games, instead if the game actually supports AMD FSR, it will enable FSR instead of RSR, which is much better because Radeon Super Resolution uses the, um, the algorithm from the first FSR, so spatial upscaling instead of temporal upscaling, and spatial upscaling is not that great. Take it for example as the LSS1 to the LSS2, they went from spatial upscaling to, um, to temporal upscaling and the difference was huge, the same from FSR1 
to FSR 2. And that's why having FSR inside the game with Hypertune games is better. And now they are doing the same for AMD frame generation, AMD FSR frame generation. Instead of enabling AFMF, which of course has more artifacts and usually adds more latency, they now add uh, frame generation at least for now for these three games. Modern Warfare 3, not 2, my bad. Marvel Spider-Man Remastered and Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is actually a nice addition for the, the most common user. And now one of the biggest points with AMD Radeon Anti-Lag to support for Ghost of Tsushima Director Scott. Takes responsive gaming to the next level by introducing an in-game option to optimally pace frames, further reducing input lag on AMD RDNA architecture-based discrete and integrated graphics products. AMD Radeon Anti-Lag 2 features an on-screen overlay that can be used to display the system latency of supported games. When Anti-Lag 2 is enabled, the on-screen overlay can be toggled on by using Alt plus Shift plus L hotkey. Use the Alt plus Shift plus L hotkey to enable Radeon Anti-Lag 2 latency monitor. And once activated, of course, a small white chevron will appear on the top left corner of your display indicating that it is enabled, but most of you guys already know that. And if you keep uh, clicking Alt plus Shift plus L, more options will appear like FPS, uh, FPS and latency and so on. Nothing really new here. And of course, if you hold the right control key, it will disable Anti-Lag 2 as soon as you, re as you release it. it it will enable anti-lag 2 as well in order for you to compare anti-lag off versus anti-lag on. We also have some interesting points here with support and optimizations for the latest 2.1 version of Amuse application, which is still in beta, including the new Stable Diffusion 3 model on AMD Radeon RX 7000 series graphics cards, AMD Ryzen AI 300 series processors, and select the AMD Ryzen 8040 series and also the 7040 series. And having already the optimizations done from the AMD side to that specific software, or, or in this case, to that specific model is pretty nice, of course. And now, of course, we have the fixed issues and improvements. The first one is intermittent application crash may occur while playing Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess on some Radeon RX 6600 and 6700 GPUs. Once again, this was an issue that was occurring on the previous versions and it is now fixed. Intermittent application crash or driver timeout may occur while launching Pacific Drive or Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix. Also, anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering settings from AMD Adrenaline Edition may fail to correctly apply for OpenGL applications, also an important fix, and artifacts may appear while playing certain games such as Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales or Rust. We also have increased memory usage may be observed while playing certain versions of Minecraft Java Edition, so for Minecraft Java players this is actually nice, it means that they kind of fix the memory usage issues that some people were having. And the final one is improved optimized shaders time when initially launching Forza Motorsport. And these are the fixed issues and improvements that we have. So according to AMD, not everything is completely fixed, some might be fixed, some might be improved, but as always, leave your comment in the comment section and let, let us, the community, know if the issues are actually fixed or if they are just improved, better than before. And as for the known issues, it is actually odd to see this, but we only have one known issue, which is audio and video may intermittently become out of sync while recording using the AV1 codec in AMD Software Adrenaline Edition. And that's it! This is actually the one that they were aiming to fix in like one month or something like that, and it is the only known issue so far. So remember, if you have any issues that weren't fixed with this version, make AMD know them. Go to the bug report tool on the AMD Adrenaline software and report the issue that you're having currently, because AMD will look into it and will fix it. So. Just do it. If you're actually one of those guys that keeps complaining about bugs here and there, but don't use the bug report tool, then yeah, it's kind of your fault as well. Just do it! And this time we also have some important notes, with the first one being AMD is working with the developers of Star Wars Outlaws to address an intermittent corruption issue that occurs after changing certain in-game graphics settings. As a temporary measure, users experience this issue may need to relaunch the game. So if you're having issues while changing settings, maybe some, some artifacts while playing, some glitches, just restart the game, boot it up again and it should be fine. And remember what I told you about Black Myth Wukong? 
Well, there was one thing that they added in the important notes, which is AMD is working with developers of Black Myth Wukong to address an issue with transparent models when ray tracing is enabled and intermittent purple or blue corruption appearing in certain areas. Now, if you are playing Black Myth Wukong, just test on those, same, on those same areas that you were having issues, just test it again, go for the game, let me know how it is, uh, if it is working, if it isn't, if it still crashes or not, and leave your comment in the comment section. Once again, let me know if the 24.8.1 drivers actually fixed the Black Myth book on crashing problems. Um, I was playing I was playing a bit for one of the next videos as well with GeForce Now. I was playing with a 4080 and I did play with a 7900 XTX, but in another part. So I don't really know if it crashes at the beginning or not. But for, for you that were having the issue, just leave a comment in the comment section and let us, us the community, know if the problem is fixed for your GPU or not. Now, as for the things that I found with these drivers, I actually didn't find anything really relevant, but I did find some interesting things. First of all, no blue screens, no black screens. My overclocking settings actually seemed pretty stable, which is great, of course. Uh, in some driver versions, they aren't as stable and I have to tweak, let's say, 10 millivolts here, 10 mil millivolts there, but usually, they are stable in every single driver version and this one seems to be one of those really really stable ones which is great uh, but that's of course that's a, a me thing because i'm overclocking and undervolting but i did notice that in terms of the 24.8.1 drivers in some cards that I tested, we do have a bit more stutters in Fortnite when loading shaders. Compared to the 24.7.1 drivers, we do have a bit more stutters here and there. After loading the shaders, the shader cache, uh, after loading it, the, the stutters will be non-existent, of course. And ears, ears over the 24.6.1 the drivers issues that we had before, so much better. But compared to the 24.7.1, I feel that the shader cache loading is a bit worse in this specific game, Fortnite, once again. On the other hand, it seems that it is slightly smoother on Counter-Strike 2, which is odd. So the shader cache loading gets a bit worse on Fortnite, at least for me. Once again, this is my experience. Remember, that doesn't mean that it will happen to every single user. This is my experience. And while once again, Counter-Strike 2 seems to have a slightly smoother transition in between the game playing and loading shaders, which is actually good as well. And we also have Black Myth Wukong on the 7900 XTX having lower boost clocks. And usually when we have lower boost clocks, it means that the power draw, uh, the power draw roof actually got hit. So meaning that I, I'm hitting the, the power roof, in this case, it's 400 watts. And so since I'm hitting the power roof now, uh, the clocks have to down clock a bit, but the performance stays the same. Meaning that in some occasions, the 24.8.1 drivers will perform better, will give more performance than the, um, than the 24.7.1. But of course, these are the, the ones that support Black Myth Wukong. Yeah, but basically that's all I found with these drivers. And well, guys, that's all for this video. I guess there's not really much more to say. By the way, I'll be releasing a video testing Anti-Lag 2 in Ghost of Tsushima in some hours. And believe me, it is much, much better. Finally, finally, we have a game that actually benefits from using Anti-Lag 2. The first one was Counter-Strike 2. The second one was Dota 2. And neither of those games, apart from very specific situations, benefited from Anti-Lag 2. But now with Ghost of Tsushima, since it is a single player game that is really, really GPU heavy, focused mostly on the GPU, of course, and at the same time uses frame generation, if you want to, of course, but at the same time has the option to use frame generation, Anti-Lag 2 can really, really bring some benefits without losing a single FPS, so very, very well done. And just to finish, as always, remember, leave your comment in the comment section, let me know what you think about the results, let me know if you think, uh, or if, your driver version works, for example, better if the new driver version for you works better in Black Myth Wukong. In my case scenario, it works more or less the same in terms of performance, once again, from what I tested. Let me know in the comment section and let us all know if you have issues, if you have uh, the drivers performing better. Because as usual, I make these videos for, not for me per se, I make these videos for the community. So let's help each other. <laughs> each other. Let's help each other as always. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one, guys. Cheers.